All right, so this video is, uh, is getting us ready to get into the vector calculus. Um, first topic in vector calculus is going to be line integrals. Um, so line integral is going to be an integral over a curve. Um, so if we want to know how to do integrals over curves, we should probably start by remembering how we define curves in R2 or R3, right? Uh, of course, we know one way to define curves in R2, we can define curves as graphs, and that's fine. We can also define implicit curves, right? We could write level sets, those are going to give us curves. Um, the curves we want to work with here are parametric curves, okay? So let me just remind us, how do we define a parametric curve, All right? So we can define a curve, All right, so a curve is going to be, is going to be a continuous map And we might call it, uh, well, let's go with, uh, I don't know, S is a popular letter for curves, gamma is a good one, um, R, R is popular. Now let's go with S. So it's going to be a map, let's say S from I. So I is an interval here. So it's a subset of R, okay going into Rn, okay? And it's going to be defined by, you know, S of t is x1 of t, x2 of t, in general down to, well, xn of t, but of course we're, we're generally working with n equal to either 2 or 3, so we might write this as x of t and y of t, or maybe x of t, y of t, z of t, if we're in R3, right? Um, so this is the basic idea of a parametric curve, right? Um, at minimum, it should be continuous, but generally we want it to also be smooth. Um, so what do we, so how do we require that? So S is going to be uh, smooth if, in addition, S prime of t and S prime of t. So remember the way you calculate the derivative of a curve, and the derivative we usually think of as a vector. You can think of the original curve as a vector if you want to, um, but we try to we try to maintain this general philosophy, right? That the original function um, maps points, and then derivatives have to do with vectors. That's kind of the, the philosophy in vector calculus. Um, to some extent, that changes a little when we get to vector fields, but yeah, let's go with it for now, right? So S prime, and you just take the derivative component-wise, x1 prime, x2 prime, down to xn prime. So smooth means that S prime is continuous. Um, so in other words, S is C1, right? In the, in the language we've introduced earlier, um, it's a continuously differentiable function, right? It's a C1 function. It's continuous. And we ask one more thing. We also ask that the derivative is never the zero vector. Okay. That's often a condition that we place on the curve as well. Um, the, the reason that we place that condition is that it's possible, you know, so smooth, we think of smooth as, you know, having a tangent at every point, right? So we think of, you know, our curve, it's in space, so it might loop around, pass under itself, who knows it, what it does, does something like this, right? Could do interesting things. Um, so you've got your curve, and at every point, all right, so this point on the curve would be, would be S of t, for some t would be the point, and S prime of t would give you the tangent vector, right? Once you have the point in the vector, right, we know 
We learn in linear algebra how to write down the equation of a line given a, uh, given a point on the line in a direction vector, right? You probably, you probably remember that there's, uh, there's an equation that looks something like, you know, um, x, y, z is equal to x naught, y naught, z naught plus t, a, b, c, right? Point on the line, direction of the line, right? Um, so you can, you can write down the, uh, the equation of the tangent line for, for the curve, right? As long as you have that tangent vector at every point, right? So, of course, if the, if the tangent vector is zero, well, that's not much use as a vector. Um, now, it could happen, it could happen that the cur your curve still does have a tangent at every point if you're thinking in terms of the, of the image, right? Um, and of course, one of the things that we do, which maybe we shouldn't, but we tend to kind of, this is one of these sort of abuses of language or notation. Um, we, we often don't distinguish between the curve in the sense of this function used to generate the curve and the set of points, right? So the curve in space, this object, this geometric object in, in Rn is really the image, right? It's really the range of this function. It's a set of points that the function generates. But often we think of that as the curve. Uh, you might recall uh, that one of the things that you can do with these parametric curves is you can change the parameterization, right? You can reparametrize, uh, and a reparametrization is something where you, you change the domain and you change the functions in such a way that you leave the image intact. Um, generally, the way that you, you reparametrize is if you, you have your interval, and, and you have you know, your function s going from that interval into Rn. Um, usually the way you end up reparametrizing is you have some other interval, right? So maybe this is like the original one, maybe call that i1, and you have some new interval i2, and you, you introduce some one-to-one -one function, right? Some, uh, I don't know what we will call this thing, um, sigma, I don't know, sigma is kind of an s, but it's Greek. Uh, let's just call it f, right? Um, and then you get you get a new curve here, which is just s composed with f, right? And as long as this function here, as long as this f is is one to one and onto, that just kind of gives you an identification between the two intervals, right? And so the you get the same points over here, whether you kind of um, go from here to there or whether you um, apply this function f. First, you get the same result, um, right? So this is the idea of a, of, of reparametrizing. So, and there will be times where we need to talk about reparametrizing. Um, not right now, but it may come up. And so, one of the things that could go wrong is it might happen that that you have a you know a zero for this vector. The vector goes to zero somewhere, and it's not that there's a problem with the curve. It's just that you chose a bad parametrization, okay? That could happen. But the other thing you gotta watch out for is, is that, you know, you could have a curve that has a, has a corner in it, comes up, does something like that. And you can, you can have a curve like this and actually make it differentiable in the sense that F, S prime of T exists at every point on that curve, even though there's obviously an issue at that point. All you gotta do is you gotta make sure that uh, S prime kind of kind of goes continuously to zero, right? So you, if you think in terms of velocity, you think about driving a car, right? Um, if you take that corner at speed, uh, well, you probably didn't make it through the corner. But if you come to that corner and you slow down, you slow down, you come to a stop, and then you just restart going in a different direction. Um, so maybe not a car, because cars can't just stop and then go off in a different direction. That's not how they steer. Uh, but you know you could you could do that right you could do that without having a break in your velocity um, if you come to a stop at that cusp right um, so that's one of the reasons why we put this condition in here that it should be non non zero at every point partly because it means we can construct a tangent everywhere and partly because it rules out this kind of behavior um, we could also talk about what it means to be uh, piecewise smooth and we would count this as piecewise smooth right so um, 
S is piecewise smooth. I'm not going to write this down. Piecewise smooth means that you have a, a curve which is, which is formed by joining together a bunch of smooth curves, right? So standard examples that we might encounter are, are things like, you know, you want to, maybe you want to integrate around a rectangle. That's certainly going to come up in some of the rect, in some of the examples we're going to do. Well, you know, a, a rectangle you can think of as a union of four line segments, right? And each of those line segments is a smooth curve. There are corners, right? So we wouldn't consider this smooth. You can't go all the way around as a smooth curve because there are four corners, but it is piecewise. It's a, it's a piecewise smooth curve made up of four pieces. Uh, now, one of the things that, uh, that you might remember, and I just want to remind you of this because it's going to come up, is that if your interval is a closed interval, we can define the length of a curve, right? And you might remember that the formula for the length of the curve is actually quite simple. Um, the length of the curve Given a parameterization for our curve, it's the integral from A to B of, well, what you do is you, you integrate the length. You integrate the magnitude, right? Remember that S prime is a vector. You just integrate the magnitude of the vector from A to B. That gives you arc length, right? Length, so, so really by length, I mean arc length. Um, length will always mean arc length, okay? Um, you can make this definition. Uh, one of the things that's important to note, and I'm not going to prove it here because we're, we're already running long on time for this video, um, this length, this result here, um, it actually doesn't depend, this is one of these things that actually only depends on the set of points. And you better hope it only depends on the set of points. Right? As a geometric object, we should be able to make sense of the length. And so one of the things that you prove, and maybe I'll ask everyone in class whether you saw this in Calc 3 or not, but one of the things that you should prove when you define arc length, you should probably prove that this is independent of your choice of parameterization. Right? This would be a really bad definition of length if one person chose this function s going from here to there, right, and used that to define the curve, Somebody else chose some other function, maybe, maybe this we call this r, right? And they're related by this reparameterization. Um, it would be really bad if people with two different parameterizations of the same curve got different lengths. That would not be good. Um, so it's good to know that, yes, indeed, you don't need to worry about the parameterization, you will always get the same length, right? So length is this kind of an invariant of the actual geometric object. It doesn't depend on the functions that you're using to describe that object, which is good to know. Um, so what we're going to do next, we're going to move on and we're going to talk about integrating functions over curves. So we're going to kind of extend this idea of arc length to something where um, we add in kind of a weighting. So maybe we think about computing like density of a, of a curve or something like that. Think about a wire or something like that. We can, we can do those kinds of calculations. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll look at that in the next couple of videos. And uh, once we get that out of the way, we'll be ready to talk about vector fields and then integrals of vector fields over curves. Okay, um, that'll probably have to wait until next week though.